celebrating Shabbat in this remarkably beautiful space on this remarkably beautiful evening. Nancy, I heard, heard rumor that you actually ordered this weather for us, so thank you very yeah. much. Well done. I appreciate it so much. Uh, this is such a special time for our congregation, um, not least of which is because we're happy to be celebrating now a second Shabbat with Dr. Casola, who's here as our cantorial soloist and educator, and she's been integrating into her new role. So if you haven't had the chance to meet her yet, please come up and say hi after the service, and there will be other opportunities that you'll hear about after the service as well, where you'll be able to sign up to come meet and greet her. We'll begin, of course, by bringing in Shabbat light, symbolically this time, because let's face it, the candle would just instantly go out, and I'm not interested to burn down this beautiful pagoda, so we can all join in this blessing with the symbolic, beautiful, electrical Shabbat light. <laughs> Shabbat fills this space and fills our hearts. This is a great opportunity for us to wish a Shabbat Shalom to somebody we haven't yet said hello to. So find somebody near you and offer them a Shabbat greeting. Let's try and keep 
There's no first row to not sit in, so you have to go to where would normally be the fourth row. I'm getting a knowing look from Rabbi off there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, but here is the essence of what we're trying to do together. And it feels like the traditional synagogue in the round that so many of us perhaps have had the chance to visit in other countries. Where we, you know, oh, who's been to one with the sand floor over, yeah, in like the Virgin Islands? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. That's a TBT trip. Yes, the sand floor. Exactly so. And it's so special because we're surrounded by this joyful sound of Shabbat. And further out from our joyful sound is the joyful, beautiful sound of those waves. In the service, we're going to have a chance for a lot of joy, a lot of singing, and also some silence, reflection, and meditation. What could be a more beautiful space to do that? And of course, we reenact the gestures of our ancestors as they perceived the holiness that this day of Shabbat entails. They would go out into the countryside and bow their heads humbly before Shabbat, God's presence coming to the world. And so as we sing the Chadodi, we'll have a chance at the end, if it's comfortable, rise, face. Actually, we can face every different direction as we rise, okay? Appreciate the beauty of the outside world and sense Shabbat's presence suffusing our community. The Chadodi is on page three of your prayer, prayer packets. I hope you have one or you can see one. We're on page three for the Chadodi. Do we have extra packets? Yeah, that's okay. I think we have an extra. Yeah, Toby said she had it. We need one? Got an extra? Over here? No, no. We can share one. In the back, maybe? You guys have one? You take another? Okay, please. 
Okay, good. So that's one. Welcome. Welcome. We're going to be seeing verses 1, 2, and 9. Only 1 and 9 are in your packet. I am sorry. Lecha, 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 to us. Torah teachings guide us toward holiness and justice. What greater gift might we receive than the Torah, the heart of our lives? This is the prophetic tradition, the prophet Micah. Mortals, what is demanded of us other than to love justice, do mercy, to walk humbly with God? This is what Torah means in our hearts. It is in our love of you that we strive to be the holy people that we might be. Praise to you, Adonai, who expresses love of Israel through words, 
of Torah together, Baruch HaSadonai, Okei Amo Yisrael.
bottom of the page our prayer for refuge and peace as evening falls. portion, we hear the story of the Israelites encamped on the plains of Moab, just on the other side of the Dead Sea, okay, if you've ever been to the Dead Sea, anybody? Anybody ever visited there? Yes, I was there so long ago, it was just sick. <laughs> we try material and it lands where it doesn't. <laughs> I think that joke is terminal. That, a, that one's different. <laughs> <laughs> so on the salty plains of Moab, in this very arid place, the, um, this foreign prophet was hired to give a curse to the Israelites, but instead, seeing the beauty of their encampment, could only utter a blessing. And it was in our TBT tent this week during our meeting that I couldn't help but think about what it feels like to be in a place that feels so far from the promised land, even though you're on the very cusp of it and yet you're able to glimpse it. And yet, even within that salty plain, there's so much beauty, there's so much possibility. I don't know, were those tents especially beautiful? Eh, they, decades in the desert have these tents. I kind of doubt it. But there's something about the holiness in the people, in the space, in the tents, that was especially beautiful, powerful, and allowed a glimpse of the future. And so wherever we are, whether it is in an arid TBT parking lot with the lights about to go in and the construction going on, or in this beautiful setting, we're so aware that regardless of where we are, the beauty is within here and not just within the space. And that said, I'm very excited to see all of you in our new space. Not too far from now, not too long from now. We're going to continue now with our Amidah. We're going to begin the blessings together and also take a moment for some silent meditation and reflection. After we say the first three benedictions, uh, Dr. Kasorla and I will invite everybody to take a little time in any space you want throughout this beach, okay? So some of you might want to walk down to the water's edge and take time for your own tefillah balafas, your own silent prayer, or of course you can stay in your seat or whatever is comfortable for you. And when you hear the music start up again, we invite you to please come and regather as we uh, join in a meditation for peace. So please rise, and yami da begin gone. Um, seven through eight. So we start on seven at the bottom and we go to eight. Did everybody hear that back there? Say seven. For the Amida? No, I don't. I don't hear it. Oh, 
our tradition at TBT to offer a prayer of healing during our Friday night service. And so we'll say Misha Bayroff for those who are in our families, our friend groups, in our community, those, anybody who is close to our heart who is in need of healing. I'll begin by sharing the names that we know, and if you'd like to share the name of somebody you're thinking of who's not on this list, you're more than welcome to do so after that. We begin with our temple members, Amy Agronov, April D'Amato, Norma Diamond, Ken Gammerman, Henry Gettenberg, Marjorie Hart Glossman, Jennifer Keller, Josh Lipschitz, Sabrina Maurer, Paula Retsky, and Ellen Warner. I think also of our loved ones, Marie Sammartino, John Marver, Connie Ambrosino, Ellen Gilder, Rochelle Downheimer, Jay Fliss, Mickey Bart, Sue Yaris, Joanne Crisulo, Matthew Pincus, Mark Ostreicher, Bart Young, Connie Talata, Marvin Goldberg, Paul Frisman, Jordan Lustig, Gloria Newell, Carol Bartlett, Sabine Meyer, Sherry Cohen, Joan Sidney, Michael Stafford, Ira Weiss, Harold Solomon, Drew Garabo, Peg Pig, and Michael O. Sullivan. If there are any others you'd like to add to our prayers, Feel free if you'd like to share their name publicly, or you can, of course, hold them in prayer in your hearts, and that prayer is just as valid. Anybody want to add a name? The Nassi family Nassi and family? Uh, Tamara Johnston Yellen. Tamara Johnston Yellen. Marcy Winokur. Marcy Winokur. Sandy Small and Aiden Small. Sandy Small and Aiden Small? Yes. Aiden Small. Friends, others, who we would add? Michael Stoller. Michael Stoller. We raise our voices in song and fervent prayer for their strength to be revived, their health to be restored. We're on page 10. Mm -hmm. Oh, bless. 
All right, friends, we have a very special privilege this evening. Uh, instead of a, uh, a formal sermon, we get to hear some words of Torah chanted from her very own Shelly Kaposi. Shelly became Bat Mitzvah on this day seven years ago, and this was the Torah portion that she chanted. So I've already shared a little bit about it, and you're going to hear a little bit more about it too after she shares um, her chanting. But Shelly, I'd like to invite you now, please, to come forward and share literally a few words of Torah <laughs> with us. <laughs> Would you like to stand here? Is that comfortable? And she must be nice and loud. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Blessings, curses, and the power of speech are the threads that weave together the story of Balak. In a small snapshot of the version of Balak, he is the king of the Moabites, and he tried to pressure Bilam, a gifted non-Jewish prophet, to curse the Israelites, which would have left them vulnerable to attack. God, in a conversation with Bilam, tried to dissuade him from cursing the Israelites, but disregarding God's directive, Bilam set off on the journey, along with his donkey, to do Balak's bidding. 
irate at being disrespected, God sent an angel as his representative to block Bilam's path. The donkey, fearfully seeing the angel with a drawn sword, veers away from the path twice, which greatly angered Bilam. Twice he beat the donkey to return to the path. The angel appeared for the third time, blocking the path. At this time, the donkey lays down on the path only to be beaten once again by Bilam. At this point, God gives the donkey a voice. She imploringly asks Bilam, what have I done to you that you have beaten me these three times? With anger, Bilam asserts that the donkey had made a fool out of him, and he continued that had he had a sword, he would have used it to kill her. But the donkey plaintively informed Bilam that she was the donkey he always rode with and had never behaved in such a manner. After agreeing with her, God then revealed the angel to Bilam. In turn, Bilam became humbled by the era of his ways. At this present time, a present day comparison about one's voice, I feel is President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine. He's an example of one who has remarkably created powerful speeches that wins the admiration of people all over the world. He expresses so well the outrage of an unjust war that has been inflicted upon Ukraine by Russia as he tries to inspire with his words that peace will prevail eventually throughout Ukraine. The story of Balak ends positively with Bilam using his prophetic gifts to give blessings to the Israelites using the words, Matovu, Matovu. O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel. So Bilam discovered the beauty of the community of the Israelites and used his voice to bless them multiple times. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Pleasure to have words of Torah from one of our own TBT teachers. Shelly, we're so happy that we get you. That's so nice. Thank you. Thank you. So, so thank you for sharing that. Um, we're going to now um, we're going to now sing a song that Shelly, I hope that actually having chosen this, you will like this song and sing along too. Um, it's not Matovu. Although maybe we'll sing that tomorrow morning in Torah study. Who knows? That's part of the morning liturgy, right? Um, but we're going to sing a song that is inspired, and I'm sorry, it's not in your prayer packet, but it's inspired here by these waves from a, a poem that the great Hannah Senesh wrote, Halicha um, B'Kizaria. She was taking a walk through Kesaria. Hannah Senesh was a great hero of the Jewish people. She perished as a Hungarian paratrooper who was captured in enemy territory. But she gave her life so the state of Israel might exist, the Jewish people might thrive. And she was incredibly gifted in many ways, not least of which through her words, where on that walk, and I think both Dr. C and I have both been on that walk yeah. with groups singing this song, it's very special. Look out at the sea, the Mediterranean, see the waves crashing on the shore, and just feeling the opportunities of the bigness and smallness of the human condition, <laughs> right? Yeah. And feel free to join in if you know the words for either the Hebrew or the English. You know this. <laughs>
Rise now for Alenu the Shabbat on page 11. Especially greet you and welcome you afterwards. Yes, welcome. And I'm sure Toby's going to want to say yes, hi too. Absolutely. This is like literally the best yeah. week to have you here. So. Yeah. Anyway, very happy to uh, to have you here and, and we'll be happy to talk. Um, tomorrow at 8 o'clock on Zoom, we're going to have mindfulness and meditation, Jewish mindfulness and meditation. 
And then that is followed by Torah study at nine o'clock, also on Zoom, led by Rabbi Moss. This week we have a, a really great event, and it's also going to happen on August 9th. So Thursday, July 21st, and on August 9th, we're going to have a tour of the of the temple. And we would really love people to come so that you can really see the progress that we've made and how amazing it's going to look. So uh, we even have an added inducement. We're going to have wine and cheese. And we <laughs> also have an opportunity to have a little meet and greet with Dr. C. And the rabbi will be there too. So if you are interested, please sign up and just RSVP to the office because I think you'll be really um, happy to see what's been going on there. Um, next Friday, join us on the green in front of the uh, First Congregational Church in Madison at 6.30 for our regular Shabbat service. And again, on Saturday morning, uh, the services will continue, but at the Chester Synagogue at 10.30 to celebrate Caleb Rosenthal, who is becoming a bar mitzvah. Our very own pop-up rabbi, pop out, pop up. So pop up. <laughs> Rabbi Moss is going to be popping up at the Bellevue uh, Cafe in Guilford this Tuesday between 10 and 11. So if you are around, please pop in and uh, have some coffee and a chat with the rabbi. So again, uh, Shabbat Shalom to everyone. And I would invite anybody here, or you know, whether you're here for the first time or not, come to Torah study if you haven't tried it in a while. Tomorrow, we're going to be learning about what we can learn about the prophet Bilam from the James Webb Space Telescope. Ooh. It's going to be far out. Yeah. Literally and figuratively. Dark and dark. There you go. <laughs> All right, friends, we take now a moment at the conclusion of our service to think of those who have passed away from this world, whose memories nevertheless persist in our hearts and whose presence we feel in our community. So we're aware of the Calvert family, the loss of Marjorie Calvert, mother of Rick Calvert, and also those who are observing yard sites uh, in, uh, in observance of someone who passed away at this time in years gone by, I invite you to please rise if you feel comfortable as I read the name of your loved one and stay standing. Tonight we remember Stuart Norman Handelman, Abner Krug, Sheila Barak, Ruth Glantz, Florence Stecker, Clyde Brian Davis, Anita Shapiro, Francis Bookbinder, and Joan and Marie Geffen. There are others here saying Kaddish for a loved one. Please feel free to share their name if you would like to with our community at this time. Anybody saying Kaddish tonight? In that case, if it's comfortable, I invite us to please rise in solidarity among the mourners of Israel as we recite these hallowed words. Page 12. It got all the Kadash me Rafa, the Almati Rafi retained him living Monte, the May the source of peace bring peace and blessing to the hearts of all who are bereaved, as together we say,
Friends, we can all have a seat. Now let's have it. I'll invite any of our kids and teens. I know there were some. Did we lose them to the water? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Some of them. We have, we have some some folks back from camp. Some folks back from Europe. Come help us with kiddish, kiddish and mozi. Okay. Come on, we'll all sing it together. It's easy. Yes. All right, while we're waiting for them, let's, uh, let's sing. You don't have to do anything. Just come stand with us and sing. That's it. Come on up, guys. Just for Kiddush and Mozi. Come on over. Baruch Okay, our closing song, Odiavo Shalom Aleinu. May peace come speedily for us, for all the world. It's in the back of your prayer packet on page. Oh. I have a request for a round. For a round. Well, if you want to make it a round, you have to make it a round. Which means you're in charge of the second part. Go for it. All right, ready?
Shabbat Shalom, everybody.